target and you didn't get it. I could very easily be frustrated. And I am somewhat frustrated. And I was frustrated yesterday, and that was evident too. In this job, in, when you do this, there will be times when you come across a wall of frustration. That wall of frustration could last for one day. It could last for one train. It could last for a week. It shouldn't last for a month. But every time that you come up to another point within your trading, know that it is another level of a chance for you to grow. And this is one of the very important things that I think people learn from me is that you've got to constantly and consistently persevere when challenges arise in life. And for those of you that are not trading at all or are not uh, or are trading and are not making money uh, and have not taken the class and are here just for the week, you know, this is something to be thoughtful about when you're starting out doing this, okay? A lot of people start out, take the class, do everything right, make money immediately out of the class. And then sometimes something happens, they step up their risk, and then they kind of hit a bump. And then they have to persevere. And so I, I always tell people, be prepared. Be prepared at this point in your trading. And for me, why did the last two days happen when I had the right pick? Who knows? I can think about it and analyze it all weekend if I feel like it. I, I really stopped doing that. In my mind, I know that every time something like the last two days happens where I, I have the exact perfect gap and then, then, I, then I don't get any money out of it um, or worse, worse I lose because I take a late trade like today in it and I had the pick and I, and I had the first trade and I just didn't do it. I, I, I very always, is it a sign of something else to come? Something else to come that, that's good when you persevere through the obstacle. The obstacle being getting up on Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning next week and trading and doing everything right. Everything that I know to do because every day I pick the right thing. So you can't ever get to a point where you say, I'm through every obstacle. Because if you want to keep progressing in life and making more money and taking more risks and taking more chances to get to the next level in life, you will have challenges. No one starts from day one and is at the top of the mountain with everything in the world, unless you were born into wealth or something like that. But even then, that doesn't mean you have everything. You know, wealth and money isn't everything. It doesn't necessarily equate to happiness. There's plenty of rich people out there that are miserable, hate their lives, or are, are not intelligent, evolved human beings. Okay? The reason that we trade is, is that we want to make money, and that's the goal, to be profitable. But at the end of the day, you know, it's really the freedom that comes with trading and the lifestyle that comes with being a day trader that actually makes it even more worthwhile uh, than anything else. Okay? So what is perseverance? Perseverance is a steady persistence in a course of action, a purpose, a state, especially in spite of difficulties, obstacles, or discouragement. In theology, it's a continuance in a state of grace to the end, leading to eternal salvation. Ultimately, the time it takes to become successful trading really varies from person to person. I wish I could say, you're going to start up today, and as soon as you take the class this weekend, Monday morning, you're going to make $1,000. Tuesday, you're going to make $500. I don't, I don't know. The time it takes to become successful varies for people. For some, it's a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, and for some, it's a lifetime. And for some people, they will never become successful because they will quit. And then we'll give up before success has had a chance to blossom. And do you know of all the people that I talked to, and, 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 and it's sorry to say, and it's sad to say, and I can tell when I, when I talk to people or when the communication with someone goes on for, for months and they don't do the class, I can tell that people really mentally have quit. They still keep trading. They still keep trading and they still keep losing or they're back and forth or they're break even. But mentally in their mind, I know that people will never make it because mentally they have quit. They have given up on the market. They've lost hope, so to speak. And when, when you lose hope that you can do it and you stop believing, okay, and you want to blame everything in the world for your failure in the market as to become successful other than take personal responsibility for it, which is exactly the case, then, then you basically quit and you won't make it. So try not to get to that point. Now, that doesn't mean you can't turn it around. There's plenty of people I've talked to that, that could turn it around, but I know that they won't because mentally they really have quit, that their attitude is so negative, they've given up on themselves and they've given up on the market. They want to acknowledge they've given up on themselves. They want to blame everything and everyone and actually are angry at, at, at successful people or people that have good systems like me because they can't do it. 
but they want to acknowledge that it's them that can't do it. They want to blame it on the market. The market doesn't care if you make it or not. The market just is there and exists. The market is not a person, but it is made up of people. It is made up of many, 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 many people. Okay? So whether you fail or succeed is up to you. But I can tell you one thing. If you quit, you definitely won't make it. So know that. And part of quitting is mentally checking out, not wanting to learn something new. Now, this is very important, what I'm going to say. There are a lot of people that are attempting to trade that are trading live. Way more people trading live, okay, than you think, that have mentally quit but, but won't acknowledge it and actually are trading, okay? Why do you think it is so easy some days to make money doing some of the things we do when people are trying to buy them and we're shorting them? VRX is a great example because when that retested the high, somebody bought it up there to think it was going to go over the high, and then it fell off a cliff after it broke the low. And there's a million other examples we could talk like that. But the point is, though, that there are a lot of people trading in the market that are losing money, but they have, they are doing it, but they actually have not acknowledged that they mentally quit. They don't believe that they can make it, even though they're doing it. They have a bad attitude. And part of the, the lack of acknowledgement that they, uh, that they can do it is that they've given up on themselves and given up on wanting to learn anything more. As soon as you get to a point, and this is this is the point I'm trying to make that is so important. I want everyone to listen to this. As soon as you get to a point that you have mentally checked out that you don't want to learn anything else, then you quit. Now, I don't want to take anyone else's classes. That would be ridiculous because I have my own business. It would be a it would be a, a it wouldn't be right uh, what's the word? Uh, it, would, it wouldn't be morally responsible, okay? So I, I uh, wouldn't be professional, and it wouldn't be morally responsible, so I will never take another person's class in an educational uh, system for training. However, I uh, do uh, motivational classes to, to help myself, okay, and read motivational books to help myself, and I allow the market and stock and my own trading and the market, really, to teach me things. It's almost like I have a relationship with the market. It's a marriage, okay? Maybe it's the only marriage I'll ever have. But I'm married to the market, and I allow the market to teach me things. I never stop learning. I always am questioning. I'm looking at myself, and I'm looking at the market to learn from it. And there was. Once you get to the point where you say, oh, I, can't, I, don't, I don't need to learn anything else. I know everything. All I know what I need to do is just come and take your trades, Melissa. When you're at that point, you're done. You may as well just pack it in. But you know what? People don't. They keep trading. They think they don't need to spend the money on a class. They think they don't have anything else to learn. Whether they acknowledge that they think they know it all or not, they don't want to learn anything else. And the minute that you get to that point that you're so, so, so stuck, you quit. Now, I do talk, and I'm very confident about the calls that I make. The market is one of them. Sometimes people say I brag about it, but it's really me pumping myself up to keep doing this, to keep doing this. I mean, how do you get through the days sometimes when you have a tough day? Well, you look at the good things that you've done, and you pat yourself in the back for the good things that you've done. But I, but I, but I never brag about myself to the market, uh, to the market itself, alone at night with me in the market alone when I'm looking at things and the weekends when I see things that no one else sees, when the market whispers to me on the weekends, like the call I saw for the market to make the high last year. It's I acknowledge the power of the market and what it has to teach me, okay? And I, and, I, and I acknowledge the market for that, and I thank the market for that. If you're not at that level where you are right there in with the market to listen to everything the market has to say in touch with it, then you've got to learn from a person. And the minute you don't want to do that, then you quit mentally and you've checked out. There's never a point where you know everything. I wish I, wish I could say that I was at that point. I wish I could say I'd ever be to that point. I know more now than I did eight years ago. Do I have more to learn? Yes. Everything, all the projects I'm doing, some of the days that it's taken up time and I haven't been here in the room, but guess what? It's making me better. It's making me better that will come out and permeate over things over time and the classes in the room and everything that I do that will, that will uh, be better for all the people that have taken the class with me, that retake the class with me, that are here in the room, and all of our experiences. It will make all of us better. Know that I share all the things that I learn with you in some way or another. Okay, in some way or another, it all comes out. Sometimes it doesn't all come out right away. 
maybe between now and the end of 2016, all the things that I learned from last year will come out in some way that you'll all of a sudden see me blossom. Because trust me, there's a lot of things I've been going through with all of this project with the television show. But I will tell you, though, that when you ever get to a point that you don't want to keep learning ever in your career, and this is just not even about trading, but it's very important with trading. This can be anything, anything you do at all. Then, then you basically mentally quit, and you may as well just retire, and you may as well just stop, okay? And I think the problem is with a lot of traders, they, 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 they are trading for a number of years, they think they know everything, and then they kind of, then they don't want to learn anything else, and they mentally check out. Whether they're making money or losing money or not making enough money or whatever the case is, they, they really kind of quit. When you're starting out, it's easier, I think, to persevere because you're embarking on the unknown. So you're, you, you, you decided it. You've made a, you made a decision and, and you're aware of the decision that you're going to do something new that you don't know anything about. And so you're okay with it. It's almost like the expectation when you're brand new to trading or brand new to gap. It's so much easier, I find, for people to learn because they, they have mentally made a conscious decision that they are going to have things they're going to learn and they're going to have to persevere. So it's a conscious decision. The expectation is that they are learning something new and they're okay with it. I find the most challenging people to teach are people that have done many, many classes and been training for years and years and years and years and years. And their expectation is that they don't have to, to persevere through anything. Now, maybe, maybe they don't. Maybe they take the class and go out and right away and make five right the first week. I don't know. But, but I don't know what that person knows. And I also don't know the pitfalls of the mental pitfalls that they may have with money or risk. And all of these things play a part of it. And we talk about it in the gap class. Okay. But wherever you are in your training career, brand new or, or doing on it for a while, it doesn't matter. You ever get to the point that you want to stop learning, then you've, then you've mentally checked out. Okay. And I mean really, really learning. Not just not just the, you know, buying an indicator and a and a and a looking at a moving average in a different way or something like that. I mean really critically learning and analyzing something to death. I mean, people say twenty six points, Melissa, that's that's a little, you know, that's a little much. But the fact is, and even Gerard said that the other day. Gerard said that the other day in the lecture for those of you that were here, he said you know, I, at first when I met Melissa, 26 points, I thought, geez, you know. But then later in the lecture, Gerard said that meeting me was a tipping point for him in his career. I was very flattered. I forgot to tell him that. It was, it was, it was, that was very complimentary, very flattering, okay? That, that meeting me was a tipping point in his trading career. If I could do that for everyone, can you imagine? And everything would be worth it. And so the thing is that, you know, it's, it seems like a lot of things, okay? But that, that type of analysis, that in-depth analysis is, is what allows me to, to hone in on the right stock every day. Whether I get the trade or miss the trade or think it's too spready, and, you know, obviously these things count and matter, but in the overall picture of my trading career in the months and weeks and years I trade, it, it, it works out to be in my favor because I pick the right thing so often in the right direction to do, okay? And so that, that matters. Because that's what gives you the confidence to keep going, and it gives you the confidence in the, in the system, and it allows you to persevere when you have a difficult day. Because you know you'll get it the next day, because you know you know the point, and you know you have the pick, or whatever the case may be. And you know it even went to the target, for example, like today. So people that are doing jobs, professional jobs, jobs that are serious, which trading is serious, anything to do with the market is serious have to be analytical, okay? If this is not your personality, that's okay. You'll learn from me and, 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 you'll, and you'll learn the system and it will force you to think. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. I think it helps develop you. And as we've talked about before, for those of you that have done the class, uh, pushing yourself mentally sometimes at whatever age you are, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, I don't care is actually good. Thinking, using your mind, using your brain helps keep you young. Analyzing things like you're doing in stocks and so on and so forth help you stay sharp and young. When I see these things, and I'm on many, many email lists for lots of different stuff, so I see what other people are marketing about the stock market and things. When I see these things where people want to buy, 
you know, programs or whatever to to just the automated system, basically, for taking automated trades, you know. I say to myself, you know, where's the thinking involved in that? None. Zip. Okay? Zero. So, you know, you do get to a point where you say, and do I really want to do this? Is it really worth it? And I think I think everyone hits this point where they say they either want to change careers or maybe they're in the middle of the trading career and they have to decide, do they want to keep going or do they want to quit? If you quit, you won't make it. If you stop giving up and wanting to learn, you won't make it either. If you think you know everything, you may as well quit right now because you're done. All right? The market is a take no prisoners kind of uh, partner in life. It expects the best of you. It demands the best of you. If you're willing to let it make the best of you, you can be the best that you can be. I think that's one of the things I love about the market. It literally demands the best of me when I go in and trade every morning and look at the gap. And look at the call that I made in the market. Do you know? I mean, that is the kind of thing. It's just incredible. Now, I know we have not made it over the high yet. I absolutely know this. But I was talking to Paul about this this morning. You know what? You know what my favorite part about my job is? My favorite part about what I do is, is, is not trading. It's not teaching. It's not doing motivational lecturing right now like I'm doing, even though this is fun. And all of it's fun. Trading is fun and teaching is fun and and, and, and making money is fun, and, and doing the motivational things is fun, and helping people is fun, and that's all fun. And meeting new people, that's fun, too. And the television show stuff, that's fun, although sometimes it's been stressful in the last year. The most enjoyment, the most pleasure that I derive out of anything that I've done since I started this whole journey, you know, at the end of 2008, up until now, of all the different things I've done and everything that's come of all of it, which is still a journey, and I'm still on it, of everything, is that is my ability to be able to look at something and predict what it will do and where it will go and, and to be able to do that. That, to me, my ability to be able to even that. I, I know I'm the farm today. I know the stupid thing today fell right away. And it's so damn funny that I didn't do it right out of the gate. But i got to tell you, the fact that I could have predicted what would happen and it wasn't making sense of a number and I predicted it this morning before it did it. That, to me, is the reason that I get up every single day out of bed, the reason I keep doing webinars, the reason I do the classes, the reason I want to be on national television, and when the market makes a new high, and when it goes to all these numbers, when it goes to the number in the moment that it needs to for me to make whatever money on the option or anybody that's done them, which, by the way, the people that have bought them way cheaper than me are making better off. But the point is, it doesn't even matter. It's the, the most pleasure that I have derived out of doing anything that I've ever ever done with the market is that I have this ability to be able to predict what something's going to do before it happens, and that to me is phenomenal. That will never stop you phenomenal. I will never lose the drive or passion to, to train or teach or do anything as long as I can do that. The minute that I stop being able to do that, I'm going to pack it in. But, but actually, my skills in doing that are getting better because the call I made in the market was phenomenal. It was just so phenomenal. Phenomenal! Okay? And part of the way I was able to make that call is because of the stock swoosh that happened last August, for those of you that were here, when the market swooshed and reversed the swoosh and negated the swoosh, and reading the gaps, reading all the gaps that happened in the market, all the bullish ones, all the bearish ones, and double trouble checking myself, and even when we dropped off a planet, even in January, we fell to start out the year. And I was in the auction then, and I was down in them. I literally took them in December, and they fell. And I could have killed them. I could have killed them then with a partial loss. And I held through them. Now, they were, you know, almost one year out. But the point was that my ability to be able to see things and predict them before they happen is what drives me to keep doing this. And all the other things are somehow set up in between. When you, when whatever it is you love about training, whatever it is, find that thing. And when you're trudging up the mountain and you have to persevere through a difficult day, remind yourself what it is you love about doing this so that you can continue to get up and do it. And maybe I like Gerard. Maybe maybe what he loves about trading is that he can fly to, you know, the Galapagos Islands and swim with the turtles, you know, a couple times a year. I don't know. Whatever it is that drives you to do this that you love, remember it. Know it. Think about it right now. And if you're not doing it, you're not trading, you're thinking about doing it, what is the reason that you would want to do it in the first place? I, I never knew. And it was funny. And, and Tom's in here. I think Tom's in here. Is he in here? Tommy listening? Tom was the one that said so long ago, Tommy there, I hope you're listening. 
But he said to me a long time ago, because I said, oh, this is, this is years and years and years ago when I started out. And I said, I, I wanted to do this to make millions of dollars. And that's why I said that I wanted to trade. And, 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 and Tom O'Reilly had already made millions of dollars in the market. By the time I met up with him, he had been, you know, through it all and back and, and made a lot of money in the 90s. But, he, you know, and, and, and Tom doesn't feel the need to live a luxury lifestyle like me. His tastes are very normal. And, and he's a regular guy. But anyways, he said, you know, very often, Melissa, you find that the reason that you set up to do something does not end up being the reason at all. And I thought, whatever. I'm always going to want to make millions of dollars. And now I want to make billions of dollars. And I still do. But the funny thing is, I remember him saying that. And this was way, way long years ago. He said, very often, the reason that you start out doing something doesn't end up becoming the reason that you end up end up loving the thing or doing it at all. And I thought that was very interesting. Because at the time when I made the transition from mortgages to, to wanting to become a trader, I wanted to make good money. I thought the market was something that I could do. I wanted to get out of the mortgage industry. I wanted to keep working for myself. And, and I wanted to work my own hours. And I wanted to work from home. And that was the reason that I decided to do it. And I wanted to have the potential to make millions of dollars. Okay. And so I decided to do that. Now, I never made millions of dollars in the mortgage industry, but I did really well. I could have. I might have if I, if I had kept going or the, if the market hadn't changed. But then everything changed with the banking world. And lending changed. And so then that, that had to make the transition. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't have to. I could have kept doing mortgages, but I never would have made the same money unless I had worked harder. And it was only so many hours in a week. And I was working very hard in 2007 and 2008 when things started collapsing in the mortgage industry. And, I, and I, I didn't want to work that hard. I didn't want to work that hard to make less. And I wanted the potential to make more. So then I found the market. And all the potential in the world exists in the market. But you got to make it up the mountain. And you have to be willing to persevere. And that's the whole point with this. It's, it's, the, you know, it's the idea that you will have struggles in your career, that you will have to get over the hump. And, and I always say to people, do you think of yourself or do you consider yourself a winner or a loser? One of the critical things that I attribute to my own personal success is that no matter how much money I was losing when I was figuring this thing out, when I, was, when I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't have a clue, I really always believed that I was a winner. I believed I was a successful person because my entire life I wasn't anything that I chose to do. And when the chips were down and you looked at the paper of everything and I was losing and didn't have all the points, it made no sense to me that I couldn't figure this thing out. It made no sense at all. And I decided to persevere because I knew that I could figure it out because I believed in myself. So if you, if you ask yourself if you're a winner or a loser, be honest with yourself for the answer. Because if you think you're a loser, then you better turn your mindset around. And, and trying to blame other people or circumstances for why things aren't working in your life is never going to get you to the top of the mountain. Take self-responsibility for the choices that you've made or the things that you're doing and know that you can turn them around and believe that you can. Whether you win or lose at this ultimately is up to you. I can give you the knowledge. I can teach you the class. You can take the trades with me. If you took the call this morning, you may have better than I did. But the bottom line is whether you succeed or fail is still on you to do it. And that mental attitude you have to have. Once you stop wanting to learn, you have mentally given up. Once you stop wanting to persevere through the challenges, you've mentally given up. And once you start blaming other people for things that don't work out in your favor, you've mentally given up. You've lost the mental toughness. And the market requires it. And I'm sorry to say it's true. And I can help you through that. And But, I mean, honestly, it's the truth. A long, long time ago, I met up with a people I I never ended up going with them. It was a prompt place. This is this was like the first like six months that I started. And it was all men. They were all a group of men. And they were telling me what to do and this and that. And they wanted me to work with them. And they were gonna pay me something ridiculous. They weren't gonna pay me enough. They were gonna I was gonna they were gonna they were gonna they wanted me to put up money and they were all gonna pay me fifty percent of the profit. And they were gonna charge me commissions that were like insane. They were so insane, I don't remember what they were. They were like ten dollars trade or something. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm gonna do all this. I'm going to have to put my own money, and then you're going to take 50% of the profits? I'm like, this is a scam. I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this. But I remember, I remember, I was like, why are you, why are you even offering me this? You know, all of this free training and this and that. Because I was like, well, you know, why am I so special or whatever? Anyways, the point was, they were like, well, because we think you'll make it, Melissa. You're, you're tough. And tough chicks 
always make it. It was all men. Well, I, I didn't I didn't go trade with them. I didn't, I didn't take it. I didn't do it because I knew it was ridiculous and it was a total scam. And I knew it was ridiculous for anyone to take that much of my profits, even if I had been profitable then, which I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been. And they probably would have known it. So guess what? That place would have made tons of money off of commissions on me because that's all they would have made. They would have lost my own money. And then they would have made commissions off of me, which is why it was a scam. But the point is, I didn't go with them. I knew it was a scam. But I thought to myself, because I didn't know how to trade them. Remember, this is the beginning. And, and I thought, gosh, you know, like, if, if they know that I can make it, well, then I, I, I know that I can make it. Well, I don't need these people. I don't need these people at all. I don't need anyone. And that, that, that kind of thing, you know, helped me keep going. But, but I knew I needed the market. I knew I needed the knowledge. I knew I needed the market. And, and looking back, when I think about the road up the mountain, what do I wish? I wish I would have, I wish I would have known someone like me. In fact, I wish I knew someone like me right now. Because the days when I'm down or I don't lose, who would I have to call? Who do I have to call? Who do I have to lift me up? No one. And that's why sometimes I'm in the room and I'm and I put myself up by the calls at work. But to be honest with you, I don't I don't have anyone to call. I mean, every once in a while I'll call my mom or whatever, but she doesn't know anything about the market. She doesn't know anything at all, and she doesn't know what to say to me if I have a bad day. And I, and I don't have a spell. So it's hard for me, and I wish I had someone else like me that I knew, but I don't. So the fact that you know me and you could come to me or call me or talk to me when you have a bad day or even call, it says it's a lot for you. You've got more than I had when I started out, except for I had a lot of confidence in my overall ability to be a winner and successful because I was in everything I did in life. And if you are at that place where you did good in something in the past or you're doing really good in something right now, you need to tap into that. You have to tap into that remembrance of who you are, of the person that is successful that can do it. And I don't care what this is. You could be a great mom. You could be great at gardening. You could be wonderful at cooking. You could be a good writer, a good singer, a good musician. You could be good at photography. You don't have to be a good trader or something to do with money or finances to, to believe in yourself to learn this thing. You're going to learn how to do it for me. You're going to learn the points, and you're going to learn the entries, and you're going to learn it from me. I'm saying tap into that level of confidence within yourself to allow you to come through the obstacles to make it. When a challenge arises or you're trying to learn something new, like my system, because everyone that comes to me learns something new because no one created the system but me. It doesn't exist out there anywhere else but here with, with me, with the sock push. And so you need to tap into that part of you that's a winner, the part of you that knows you're great at whatever, okay? That helps you. And everyone has something different. And it's not about judging ourselves and saying, well, this person is you know, better than this person because they're so-and-so and they make this much money and then this person is just a mom. Well, no, being a mom is a hard thing. My sister's a mom. I don't know how she does it. I want to be a mom someday, but that's going to be a whole different mountain. You know, everyone has something to offer, but it's your mental attitude to believe that you're a winner that you can do it. Because at the end of the day, the choice is yours because you will have challenges. You will have to climb up the mountain. The market demands the best of you and demands the best of me. And it's easier for you because you can take my class and follow me and you have me and I don't have anyone. And, and, and I am a tough chick, so I made it through. But there are days and you people have been in here with me when I, and yesterday was one of them too, where you feel the frustration of, 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 of me, you know, which is that sometimes I have to pull away from the whole world. And luckily I can do it. And living here in this magnificent apartment in beautiful city allows me to help me to do that. But it is, it is challenging for me sometimes when I even feel like I have to get to the next push or the next level. So know that no matter where you are, no matter how successful you are, no matter how long you're doing it, you're going to have these days. It doesn't mean you quit. It doesn't mean you don't give up. Think of the reasons you want to do it. Think of the reasons that you love to do it. For me, even when I have a bad day, the reason that I love to do it still exists. Still exists because today I had it right and yesterday I had it right. And knowing that helps me continue on. And knowing that I have this special thing to be able to predict what somebody's going to do before it does it in a way that, that really no one else knows that, that I know. And the boldness of my ability to do that says a lot about me too. Because it is bold to say the market's going to make a brand new all-time high when it's trading down and retesting the level at 180 and it's gapped down five days in a row. And I'm telling everyone to buy call options in the spy. Well, the fact that they were two cents or three cents or five cents or $1 million is too bold to me because I'm putting myself out there and people are trusting in me and they're risking money with me and you are too every day, okay? 
So I, I, I am grateful that you trusted me to teach you these things. I honor that in you, and you honor it in me when you come and pay me money for the class. But I want you to understand that you are still going to need to believe in yourself to do it. You still need to believe you're a winner. So tap into that part of you that is good at something that you know you're good at or a quality that you like about yourself. You're a nice person. You're smart. You're whatever. Think about the quality in yourself that you admire that you're going to have to tap into to do it. So that when you have a bad day, you'll remember that about yourself and you won't want to quit or give up or give up on anything, whatever it is your dream is. And then getting back to what I was saying earlier, many times we start out and the reasons that we want to do the training thing evolve. It evolve. And it can evolve into so much more than we ever imagined. And that's why I say be willing to not set boundaries for yourself and close yourself off. If you set boundaries that are too closed off for yourself in life, you will stay stuck. You, you will stay stuck in those boundaries. You will not allow opportunities to open up for you, like taking my class or doing something else or trading the market or anything at all, even people that you might meet like me or somebody else. Maybe you'll meet me, and then through me, you'll meet somebody else, and so on and so forth. Maybe you'll meet me, and one day you'll be on TV. Who knows? The point is that once you close yourself off and you limit yourself to certain things and close off the boundaries, then, you're, then you don't give yourself a lot of opportunity to expand in life, and we all need to do it. It keeps us young. It keeps us alive. One of the things I love about trading my system in gas is that every day I get up, I have no idea. No, I don't know if I'm going to trade MFRM. I don't know if I'm going to trade RH. I don't know if I'm going to do nothing. I don't know if I'm going to make $1 or lose a dollar or whatever. You don't, you don't even know. It keeps you alive and passionate and driven, and it keeps you on your toes. And I think that's good for everyone. When we start to limit ourselves in our lives, we really close off opportunities for ourselves. We, we cannot think about things that happened in the past. I can't tell you how many people I talk to. All I want to do is talk about the past. All I want to do is talk about how much money they've lost and how much money they've paid for classes and how, much the, how many years have gone by. And I listen to talk. I listen to stories. I empathize with people. I do it all day long, 25,000 times a day. I, I get it. I was there. I get it, people. I, I'm right there with you, except for the fact that you have to get to a point. You say, okay, well, I can't change anything that happened in the past. Guess what? I can create my future, but if you live too much in the future, then you're not living in the present. The most power that you have is right now today in the present moment. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to take my class and learn how to trade, or are you going to wait? Are you going to wait six months from now when the price of the class could be $10,000 and I'm on TV or maybe not teaching at all? Who knows? The point is that everyone wants to think about the past. Stop doing that, number one. Number two, it's good to plan for the future, have goals, but if you live too far in advance of the future, you're still closing yourself up and setting yourself boundaries because what if you don't meet the expectations for the future things at the time that you want to do it? Then what do you do? Then you're boxing yourself off even more, and you're missing the present moment. One of the things that I think is great about being single at this point in my life, which is, which, which is incredible, actually, and I'm at a great, great point in my life uh, and being single, is that the person I am now today, whoever I meet as a partner, I am so much different of a person than I was 10 years ago. Not, not in five, not who I was in my upbringing or my parents or my morals or anything like that. But the woman that I am today is so much different than the woman I was 10 years ago. And, I, and, and so you say to yourself, be willing to live in the present moment to become the full person that you could possibly be. Because if you're, if you're not, you may be missing out to do all kinds of amazing things with your life. Sometimes we, we have goals and we, we don't reach them. We think about the future, we think about the future, we think about the future, and we don't reach the goals. And I thought I was going to figure out how to trade and come back to New York in six months. It didn't happen. And then I got in a slump. And I was in that slump for a long time where I was depressed and I was down to myself and I was crying every day thinking I was never going to go back to New York. And, and then, lo and behold, I just, I just let it go. I just let it all go. And I stopped, I stopped thinking about the future of getting back to New York and I started living in the present, which was figure this freaking thing out, Melissa, figure out how the heck to do this darn thing. It has taken more time than you thought. That sucks. I have lost way more money than I wanted to. That sucks too, okay? But I know that if I don't get myself together right now, I'm never going to see the future rich, you know, of the future potential that I want to do. I'm never back to New York. I have to focus right now today. What do I have to do? What is it going to cost me? Do I have to take a class? Do I have to uh, spend more time training, reading my charts, figuring out the gaps? Is there a point I'm missing? 
You've got to be right in the now, okay? If you're not willing to do that, you will never reach your future goals. And again, sometimes those goals change and develop. And, and, and they end up being more than we thought or different than we thought, but, but better. I always say this whenever I'm thinking something, and I'll share this with you today and I'll let everybody go. You know, when I'm putting something out there and I have a goal or something I asked for and you ask the universe for it, you can, you can meditate, you can, you can pray. This doesn't have to be a religious thing, although it can be. You say to yourself, I, I, you say what you want, okay, and you say, I asked for this or something better. And that's what you say. Because even saying what you want sometimes closes you off. Because guess what? You have to say it's something better. What is something better? What if it is something better? Okay. I recently met a man. I told you guys about this man two weeks ago. I haven't gone out with him yet, although we're talking every day. I never imagined I could meet a man like this. Never in my wildest dreams. We haven't gone out yet. What if we never do? Guess what? It doesn't matter. Now I know that a man like him exists. And now I know that I can ask for him or something better, because there will be someone better. If he doesn't come into my life, then there will be something better. Do you see? So it's just the idea of believing, believing. And many people miss the boat and stop believing and don't stop believing. And that's the point of the lecture today. <laughs> so now you have it. I talked and talked and talked and talked. Does anyone have any questions? 